amusing that English readers essentially bought the camera to read some Italian novella and they ended up reading a story about the King of Denmark. and welcome back to John Florio channel. Today I will explain how John Florio translated Boccaccio's The Cameron and why he did it anonymously. Don't forget to subscribe. The Cameron is Boccaccio's greatest and most famous work. The book contains 100 tales told by a group of seven young women and three young men. They shelter in a secluded villa just outside Florence in order to escape the Black Death, which was afflicting the city. Boccaccio probably conceived the Cameron after the epidemic of 3048, he completed by 3053. The various love stories of the Cameron range from the tragic to erotic, with some funny jokes in between. John Florio brought the manuscript of Boccaccio's The Cameron to John Wolfe in 1587 without indications of authorship, but the book was not published until March 1620. It is no coincidence that Second Fruits, Florio's second work, published in 1591, four years after he gave The Cameron to John Wolfe, contains two chapters in which Florio Borrow translated and adapted two novels from the Cameron into English. When English the Cameron was finally published in 1620, it contained the printer's address to the reader, written by Isaac Jagger. The Cameron is dedicated to William Herbert, 3rd Earl of Pembroke, patron of John Florio. The handsome folio of the Cameron was printed in two volumes, adorned with woodcut illustrations of French origin. However, neither the author's name nor the translators appear on the cover or in the text. The translator declined to be identified. But in 1953, Herbert Bright published the first English translation of the Cameron, a book that analyzed the style of the anonymous translator in the Cameron, attributing the creative, rhythmic and florid style to John Florio by a comparative study of the respective style and techniques used in the text by the Anglo-Italian. But why such a famous, outstanding writer like John Florio felt the need to publish a work anonymously? There are a couple of reasons. The Cameron was considered an immoral book that contained sexual allusions and offending material. And John Florio was a foreigner who was engaging in a translation that was considered controversial might have been cautious about claiming its paternity. Another reason comes from the fact that when John Florio brought the manuscripts of the camera to John Wolfe in 1587, he didn't give any indication of authorship. He didn't admit to John Wolfe that he was the author of English the Cameron. So when the book was finally published in 1620, John Florio wasn't associated with the work. But how? John Florio translated Boccaccio's The Cameron. John Florio used every version of The Cameron available to him to render his translation. He would never use just one edition if he could find three. He used the original Boccaccio, the Sensor edition by Salviati, and the French translation. The main difference between Florio and his predecessors is in the censoring technique. We know that Boccaccio brought many amusing stories with sexual allusions. For this reason, many stories of the camera were censored by Florio's predecessors. John Florio rewrote them, specifically two stories. The first novel that John Florio rewrote is the one about Alibek and Rustico, which was replaced with a story borrowed from François de Belfort's Histoire Tragique. 
I was able to find which story John Froyo borrowed. It's the number 75, the wonderful and chess resolved continency of Felserikta, daughter of Sivol, king of Denmark. Froyo translated and adapted the story from French into English. Isn't it amusing that English readers essentially bought the camera to read some Italian novella and they ended up reading a story about the King of Denmark? Another story John Florio rewrote is the one about the Baronchi family, the number six of day six of the camera. And not because it contained any of the sea material, no, this time this story didn't contain any sexual allusion. It's just that Florio didn't like it. Sorry, Boccaccio. I have a permit. This just says I can do what I want. As you may have understood, Florio was not afraid to change Boccaccio's book. <laughs> and he was able to achieve a more floral, bombastic and rhythmic version of an idea to give his personal English version of the camera thanks to his love for doublets, rhythmic and balanced sentences. He also translated Boccaccio's songs into English sonnets, as I have demonstrated in my book John Florio's Italian and English sonnets. John Florio is defined a musical lexicographer and his translation a process of recreation. Florio is a musical lexicographer and his translation of Boccaccio's The Camera is a process of recreation. His amazing linguistic resourcefulness and his sensitive ear combine in a style that is as racy and vigorous as it is balanced and rhythmical. Yet yeah, John Florio was eccentric. Maybe a little weird and did an extremely free translation of Boccaccio's The Camera but with John Florio, Boccaccio's The Camera could hardly find a better rendering. Now, if you haven't read it, go and read the English translation of Boccaccio's The Camera by John Florio now. You can read it for free online. I will give you the link in the box below. You will love it. Now, let me know what you think. Have you read Boccaccio's The Camera? What do you think of John Florio's choice to rewrite the tales of Boccaccio? Don't forget to subscribe and stay resolute. Bye!